Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on automating synth parameters in Logic Pro 9. What this allows us to do is it allows us to take any of our automatable knobs or faders or any controls within a synthesizer or a plugin for that matter, like an effects plugin, and automate them across our timeline so we can create some more interesting effects. Uh, so for instance, maybe I wanted to create a filter sweep by moving my uh, cutoff frequency knob or a resonance sweep or an FM sweep or a pitch sweep or really anything you can think of. And this doesn't just go for the ES2 synth that I'm using here. It goes for any of Logic synths and uh, also any third-party plugins that you install in the Logic. Uh, so what I have is I just have uh, one of Logic's stock uh, patches that I've slightly tweaked. And I'm going to uh, record in first just a stock bass line, just a standard bass line um, with no effect on it. And then I'm going to go back and automate the, the effect on top of the pre-recorded recording. Now, you can do this simultaneously if you want, but I'm going to do it separately for this video. It makes it a little bit easier since I'm holding a microphone in one hand. I don't have two hands to uh, automate the parameter and play at the same time. So I'm just going to play in uh, just a simple bass line here. There we go, just a very simple um, synth bass. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to op open up my ES2 again, and I want to create a, a customized filter sweep. Now, you can do a filter sweep with an LFO or with uh, one of the envelopes, but I'm going to do a customized shape uh, to my filter sweep via automation. And what we're going to do uh, is we're going to uh, set this uh, cutoff frequency to one of our controller assignments. And the way you set that up is you press Command K, brings up your controller assignments window. You may see some controls here. If you don't want to use them, you just click on them and hit delete. I have none, so I have a clean slate here. I'm just going to hit uh, learn mode in the bottom. And it says no message received. It's awaiting a, a uh, parameter. So I'm going to click on the parameter I want to learn. And I'm going to move the corresponding fader or knob that I want to control this with. I'm actually using a fader on my MIDI controller to control a knob. So you can do that. You don't have to have a knob for a knob or a fader for a fader. All right. And then the next thing we need to do is we just need to go back to our um, controller assignments window and turn learn mode off. And then I can just close the window out. So now I can use my uh, fader to create a filter sweep. And this is what it sounds like. And there you go. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move that up to about the middle. And then I'm going to close out my ES2 window. I'm going to record automation on top of this now. In order to do this, I need to turn automation view on or just hit A. It brings it up as well. Uh, and then what we're going to do is uh, we need to turn on one of our tracks live automation modes. Now, this is not an automation tutorial per se, so I'm not going to go over what each of the live modes do. Just use touch when you're recording uh, and use read when you're just trying to listen to it. So I'm going to turn touch on, go back to the beginning, and you don't have to press record, you just press play and it'll record in the automation on top of what you've already recorded. <laughs> And there you go. As you can see, it has uh, recorded my custom shape that I uh, played in on top of my bass line. So with this, I mean, really, you can go crazy with this. You can add multiple parameters. You can record multiple parameters on top of each other. You don't have to just have one. So you can create all sorts of wobble type effects and stutter type effects. It's common in modern music today. Uh, the last thing you need to do is make sure uh, you go from touch mode back to, or I was on off before, but we're going to go to read. What this does is it just reads the automation, but doesn't um, uh, record in any more automation. If you leave it on touch mode and you move one of your controllers, you could accidentally uh, overwrite or uh, write in extra automation that you may not want. All right, so I hope this tutorial helped. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks.